Hello, everyone. This is Jeanette Schliga with VGA. Thank you so much for being here to help celebrate our fourth birthday. And here is Eleanor Brinsko, and she is going to be presenting on Finding Aids Come to the Rescue. All Eleanor, right. thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jeanette. Thank you to everyone joining me today. I'm coming to you from Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, which is a suburb of Madison. Uh, so today I want to talk to you about Finding Aids. And a lot of us rely so much, especially during these COVID times, on online databases. We have Ancestry, FamilySearch, Google, MyHeritage, you name it, there it is. But only a small percentage of the genealogical documents that can help break down our brick walls are digitized. And so how can we find our collections and how can we sift through them? Through finding aids. Like Jeanette said uh, at the beginning, we don't really have time for question and answers toward the end, but if you would like to contact me with any questions or ideas, uh, this is my contact information. I have my email, my website, and I even have a Facebook account. Uh, so please share and follow. Uh, I post things daily. So what is a finding aid? And more importantly, what can I find in a finding aid? According to the Online Dictionary for Library and Information Science, a finding aid is a published or unpublished guide inventory, index, register, calendar, list, or other system for retrieving archival primary resource materials that, and look at the highlighted there, provides more detailed description of each item that is customary in a library catalog record. So if I took an example like Seinfeld, I've been watching Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee. I don't know if you've seen that on Netflix. So I had Seinfeld on the brain. If I went ahead and I looked on WorldCat or a library catalog that has something to do with Seinfeld, I type in Seinfeld, a bunch of books and DVDs will come up. What that record is gonna give me the title, the author, uh, publication information, and where I can get it. Very short and sweet. But if I wanted to see the real documents for Seinfeld, I can go to ArchiveGrid or to WorldCat and look for archival materials, and I can find out where the resources are. Here's um, a a page from the Philadelphia Area Archives Research Portal. I didn't think Seinfeld would have connections to Philadelphia, but there they are. And their finding aid is 58 pages long, not just a screenshot, 58 pages long. So where can I find these finding aids? Well, they're on the Library of Congress's website, on different groups like the Dodge of the American Revolution. And then ArchiveGrid. I love ArchiveGrid. I don't know if you've worked with ArchiveGrid before, but it's a place where you can go ahead, you can find where different archives are throughout the country and possibly throughout the world, but then also what the collections are within. If I'm looking for a particular collection, if I'm looking for a particular surname, I can type that in or a particular location, and I want to see where these collections are hidden. With ArchiveGrid, there are two different resources that they're going to pull up for you. They can either pull up the, the catalog record or they'll pull up a finding aid. I looked up Alfred Hitchcock. And so Alfred Hitchcock has records at the Library of Congress, but they're only giving me a record, a catalog record. But at Smith College, I can find out his family papers right there. Well, maybe not actual Alfred Hitchcock. It's probably his ancestors. But there you go, the finding aid for uh, his family papers. And then state historical societies. This is an example from the Wisconsin Historical Society, and they have it, the finding aid just right up on the screen. You just, just type in how to find the finding aids. You type in your, your topic. So I had Rod Sterling from Twilight Zone, which has nothing to do with Wisconsin, but the Historical Society has his collections. Um, and then it would just be scrolling through here, or you can get a PDF printout of it. What, how is the finding aid laid out though? We're going to take a look at a few examples of a finding aid, and you can kind of start seeing the pattern about what's included and what's not. We have the title and author at the top, an overview, so the summary, the biographical note of the person it pertains to or the location, scope and contents. Yes, this looks relevant to me, so what is really in here? And then arrangement. What is that table of contents? What is the order? of this collection. Administrative information such as restrictions, um, how to cite the collection, um, what, um, what are some different parameters I can use to work within here. Detailed description, going folder by folder. Related materials, so if I really like this, I want to go, I like this material and something else. What else can I look at? And then catalog headings. 
So today for this presentation, this really short presentation, I'm going to be looking at the Minnesota Historical Society. The Minnesota Historical Society has some of the best finding aids I have ever worked with. With this particular collection, um, they have the finding aids either online or they have and or they have it printed out in these binders. And I'll show you quickly, look at how many finding aids they have. There are multiple finding aids within each of these binders. All these are going to be printed and uh, printed out, and they're also available online. If the collection has been added to, they're going to go ahead and swap out the old finding aid with the new finding aid. They're going to be constantly updating these. So what kinds of materials would they have at the Historical Society that I can look up with the finding aids? There are military collections, agricultural, including digitized century farm applications. So if your ancestor has a century farm in Minnesota, see if they have gone through the application process. Organization files, immigration organizations and businesses. Did my ancestor interact with these businesses when they came to Minnesota? And then genealogical records for those families where they don't have that next generation who is interested in family history and they don't want to just throw it away. They'll likely donate to a historical society. So we're going to use three different finding aids today uh, as an example for what the Minnesota Historical Society has to offer. We're going to be using a prominent politician, not Jesse Ventura, uh, but we're going to be using uh, Governor ML Elmer L. Anderson. And then we're going to go with an individual um, who was lesser known and then by location. Let's take a look. If I wanted to see if my ancestor may have been the governor, or maybe my ancestor had some dealings. He worked for the governor. Maybe he corresponded with the governor. I still want to look at these records. Maybe the governor passed a bill or a law or something that had an effect on my aunt, had an effect on my ancestor. So let's look at that, that progression of the materials. Title, the overview. So just kind of that, that information you'd find on WorldCat. 181 boxes. I want to be able to look through these boxes, but I want to use my time very, very well and efficiently. And so I don't want to sift through all 181 boxes. This finding aid is going to help me pinpoint where I need to go look. Biographical note pulled from the information that is in these collections, the archivists are going through and looking at the original materials to create this biographical note. Scope and contents. What are in all these boxes? What's the general terms? How are they arranged? It, what access and restrictions there are, who has touched these materials, who has gone through and organized them, who has sifted through them, who has put these finding aid together, and then all the folders, all the folders. This looks fantastic, but I don't want to sit here and sift through 81 folders or boxes worth of folders. I can go ahead and do a find and I can type in a particular last name. And then after scrolling through all that, related materials. How else is he going to appear in these different collections that are at the Historical Society? And then finally, catalog headings. I like this particular part about Elmer L. Anderson and um, this particular topic or his relationship with this person. How are the archivists putting these together? How are they pulling them apart? I could then go ahead and look, do a Google search, do an archive grid search, WorldCat search, a search within the historical society here to see what other collections fall into this particular organization. So that's a bigger one, but maybe my ancestor is not as prominent. Maybe he was an individual. So here is Ralph O. Elgitz. And it's a similar finding. The, the archivists are treating this person's collections with the same amount of care. He was he fought in World War II and he died on Omaha Beach on D-Day. He didn't have any descendants, but his family decided they collected all of his papers and they, they donated them to the Minnesota Historical Society. We have the overview here. We have the biographical note talking a little bit about who he is, if there's any restrictions, and then the what's in each of these folders. If he might have been a distant cousin of mine, I want to see if my direct ancestor had corresponded with him at all. Maybe I'm doing a project on World War II on D-Day on Omaha Beach. This would be a great resource for me to use because I'm looking at the primary documents. Again, we have the catalog headings and uh, that's that. But they're not gonna include um, categories if, or subjects or sections if it's not applicable to this particular collection. 
But what if I want to look at whatever the, the historical society has on my ancestral county, Chisago County, not Chicago County, but Chisago County, Minnesota, um, has a lot of their papers donated to the Minnesota Historical Society is organized in the same way. But look at how many primary documents and originals that they would have as on microfilm. Um, and I believe there's possibly, yeah, there's also per paper copies as well. Access restrictions. As I'm scrolling through here, restricted, restricted, restricted. I need to know what the restrictions are. I'm going to go back to administrative information to see, oh, okay, that's how I can handle these records. And then going down here, topics, places, document types, and functions. That's all great. And so I can use these different search techniques, these different keyword searches for not only the, histor the Minnesota Historical Society, but Wisconsin Historical for Library of Congress, for NARA, for WorldCat. I can use these same ideas for these already established collections. But what if I wanna create a finding aid for my own ancestor? This is another way to be looking for the different holes in my research, in my collection. What do I know? What don't I know? What do I still need to get? I like using the family group sheets. I like having an inventory. I have spreadsheets all over the place, but this is gonna give me another comprehensive way to understand what materials I have. So I would take this layout and try to fill in the blanks. I'm using the samples from the Minnesota Historical Society to kind of help me fill out a uh, finding aid for my maternal grandfather, uh, Ronald J. Owen. So using a Word document or Google Docs, I went ahead and I, I tried it out. I wanted to see what I have. So I laid it out just like the Minnesota Historical Society has done. I have the overview, what, how much information I have, a biographical note, scope and contents, will kind of give me an idea about what I do have, the arrangement, how am I going to put all my grandfather's materials in order, administrative information, processing who originally had it when well, my mom was the first one to start playing around with it and, and organizing what she wanted to keep. Um, and then I, I kind of took it over a little bit. And then just box by box, where's this information that I have so that if somebody's asking, hey, I'm looking for this, I can go get it pretty quickly. Related materials, and then I created my own just sample uh, subject headings. These are not official standard of subject headings, um, but just to kind of get a rough draft head start. Um, just imagine if my children are not interested in genealogy, which, oh my gosh, I hope they are, but if they are not, and I'm getting to be old enough where I'm starting to deaccession my own materials, I want to go ahead and I will organize my materials as such. And having this finding aid is going to help the archivist who is going to process this collection. Sure, they'll tinker around with it and make it fit to what they need for the Minnesota Historical Society or Goodhue County Historical Society. But I'm already giving them a head start because I'm giving them the knowledge that they need to know in order to help them process the collection I'm giving them. But with that in mind, I want to say thank you and happy fourth birthday, VGA. Thank you so much for having me. I get to be back in July. We're talking about how to use Google a workspace, a workspace for your genealogical research. And again, here's my contact information. Thank you so much.